are uh, about to start shuffling up for this top four match. Of course, a really, really high level match between these two players. No doubt that Pedro is one of the absolute best in the game and Jeff trying to prove that he is as well. Uh, I have to favor based on, I mean, like I mentioned, based on matchup and based on just experience alone, you, you almost have to feel that, uh, well, on experience alone, you have to feel that Pedro is just not going to get riled up here. You know, he's he's been here before many, many times. And like we mentioned, this might be Jeff's very first uh, uh, streamed match of the weekend. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I've definitely, I've seen him uh, in the rows of players working very hard to get to where he is. 6-1-1 one, one is a very impressive match score. And uh, we got to watch Pedro plenty of times. We've seen him on the international stage very successful. He's been on the world stage just a, a few hours ago. He had to play his winning in on stream and uh, very interesting things went down and yeah. he had to stay at the table for like over 20 minutes waiting to see, did I win my match? What happened? Are we going to keep playing? He sat there diligently just waiting to see what was going on and he had to keep playing. <laughs> he played another game uh, and, and, had, and then up, ended up losing that game, had to play a game three and ended up getting a Mars Shadow lock out the opponent's hand and winning the game. So he sat at a table for almost an hour and a half, way more than any other player should, and ended up finding a win. I want to interrupt you real quick because I want to let everybody know this is not a typo. <laughs> this oh. is not a typo. Uh, Jeff did not put any achievements down as, um, <laughs> well, apparently he's newer. Aranguru, <laughs> uh, um, Lunala, Malamar, and Agrobike are going to be the cards that Jeff is showcasing for us today. Wow. Agrobike, huh? Sometimes it just gets you there. It's another great way to get psychic energies in the discard pile. We're going to see Acro Pike from Pedro as yeah. well. So. I was going to mention, we might see eight Acro Pikes between yeah. these two players. And, of course, Pedro Torres, he does have some achievements and some just great ones couple. at that. Uh, look at that. Top four Latin American internationals, top 16 Oceania internationals, top eight Europe internationals, and top 16 at Stuttgart regionals. That's all in, well, three of them are in 2018. Now, did he just leave off his international win? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He just I, assumes we know. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm very positive that Pedro has won internationals yes. before. Very <laughs> humble man right there. <laughs> or maybe the exact opposite. Yeah. Oh, well done. Well done. Uh, we saw Zergatry on the screen. That's going to do absolutely nothing in this matchup, but it's a cool card. Yeah, it's it's one of his tag cards in the, uh, in the deck. And it looks like both players are already setting up. Um, we are ready to go as soon as... Pedro has a basic Pokemon, and he does. So we are, so we are about to get some prizes down between these two players. Jeff over here gets a Max Elixir, as well as a couple of Cynthia's and a Guzma with an Inke. Uh, not the greatest prizes in the world, but definitely nothing backbreaking here. And now for Pedro, we see a couple of energies and a Max Elixir. Again, same thing. Not the greatest prizes in the world, but nothing backbreaking. Yeah, those are definitely workable prize cards for both players. Nothing too bad prize there. It looks like we're going to be off to a fantastic top four match. All right. The top four match between Jeff and Pedro is about to begin. Remember, one of these players is going to make it to Championship Sunday. The other player will have to sit down in the audience and watch tomorrow morning. Pedro Torres starts things off with a uh, Tapu Lele as his active Pokemon plays a Floatstone onto it Whoa. with the Grass Energy and just... Wow. Oh, man. <sighs> Letting loose to start the top four. Well, let's let loose, man. All, All right. right, let's do this. Marshadow letting loose for game one in turn one of this top four. Remember, both of these players will get to draw four new cards. Pedro has not played a single supporter yet, so if he draws a supporter, he'll be able to play it right away. And if he doesn't, well, Jeff's going to have a pretty good idea of how bad Pedro's hand is. Yeah, and I don't even know if Jeff wants to look at these four cards, because if they aren't good, he is probably going to have a hard time hiding wow. a tell here. Immediately and the first card drawn is a Professor Sycamore here for Pedro. Plays an Acrobike before he uh, draws that Sycamore. He has an Escape Rope and a Zerka Tree available to him. I don't know if either of these cards is going to be played. Yeah, I don't think he even wants the escape rope at all maybe he goes for Zerka Tree and puts a seventh prize out there it's a great way to work against uh after you use marsh Attic, you play Zerka Tree, you use lighting gx and you grab whatever good card they have throw it into the prize cards all right so now jeff and pedro had uh brand new hands of four but pedro now finds seven new ones thanks to that professor sycamore in his hand now 
Will he be able to start getting some Rayquazas down onto his bench? He already has a couple of energy down there. He would love to. Of course, he has another Marshadow in his hand in case he decides. Oh, there's a oh. there's a Rayquaza, by the way. Huge, huge acro bike for him. Throws away a lightning energy as well. We are going to see Stormy wins. Stormy wins number one. Gets rid of a couple of items and a Rayquaza. But it will find him one of his energies from the discard pile. Very, very important card there to find. You're always going to see Pedro checking over to see what he needs, if he needs to grab the grass or the lightning energy. Ray Quaza number two means Stormy win number two, and that's a couple of uh, Sycamores with a choice band gone. So that's some very key cards that you do not want to see in your discard pile without having used them. But at the same time, it's still a trade-off that you will gladly take if that means getting more energy into play on this first turn of the game. Yep, that means he's down three Sycamores now already. I believe he does play cards like Pow Pad, so he will be able to shuffle some of those back in. But... Uh, honestly, he may have had to cut some of that stuff when he adds four puzzle of time. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see exactly how that ends up playing out for him. Now, Jeff gets to start his first turn of the game right away, plays a floatstone of his own. Uh, his hand, not too exciting with the exception of that Lily. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Lily is a great card to see on the opening turn. However, he doesn't have anything else going on. So hopefully these six cards have something solid for him. Yeah, draw six cards off the top. Just as simple as that. A beautiful play on this first turn of the game for him immediately recovers from that Marsh Shadows let loose. And uh, now that we get to see his hand, we see a Mysterious Treasure at least, but and a Max, uh, Max Elixir. So his hand is playable, but it's it's not uh, it's not the most dominant hand I've ever seen. Yeah, he can go and he go ahead and use this Mysterious Treasure, grab himself an Inke, and then he can retreat to... To another Inke. The, uh, the ne the, probably the Necrozma in his hand. He'll, oh, he has uh, the Necrozma in hand, correct. Yeah, so he can he can hide there, let it take a hit. Hopefully it doesn't get knocked out. He really needs to get two Malamars into play so that he can start to use his Psychic Recharge. So obviously, time to take a look into the deck and see what he's working with. I see Mimikyu. I see Kiratina promo. Uh, we weren't lying when we said there are a lot of one of techs. Yeah, no kidding. Now, Jeff does not know the contents of Pedro's hand, but we do. And uh, I know I saw a couple of Guzmas in Pedro's hand. So uh, this kind of a board from Jeff is very, very vulnerable to that uh, to that hand from, uh, from Pedro, as long as Pedro can get some sort of an attack going. Remember, he does not have a guaranteed, uh, a guaranteed knockout on that Inke quite yet. Unless he starts attacking with the Tapu Lele. <laughs> he, he, actually, that is a potential way to take a knockout here. He could, he could certainly go for that if he has an energy on the following turn. So Jeff, not done with his turn yet, but it looks like the judges are having a little powwow there. Um, yeah, Inke is, uh, is the active Pokemon here for Jeff, and Jeff is still looking at potential options for himself. Yeah, I think we're just discussing the, the eight cards off Lily. He does have six in hand, so after playing two with the Mysterious Treasure and the Psychic, he should be okay. Sure. All right. Either way, I'm sure that we'll get that figured out as soon as possible. Um, but, yeah, what uh, what Pokemon is he grabbing from the deck there? I think that uh, Inke seems to be the obvious target, but yeah. is, there, is there something else that you might want to grab? I don't. I can't really make a make a good excuse for anything else, really. Uh, I think that Inke seems to be the the easy choice. So I think he was just looking through his deck and then was eventually going to find the Inke. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything else in there for him that would help him out. Um, so we should see the Inke coming down soon. It's really just a question of if he's going to retreat and uh, try to hide for a turn, or if he feels comfortable leaving out an Inke. I don't, I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable with an ink in the active spot, but who knows? All right, so now uh, we do have that Necrozma in his hand as well, so that's likely who he's going to retreat to before he passes his turn. Also yep. has a Max Elixir in hand, which he may use. Uh, also, getting rid of that Floatstone is pretty important there. It's going to stop the Guzma play from Tapu Lele there. Unless uh, Pedro has another uh, floatstone in hand, which I do not see. He actually just retreats onto the Inca. He decides not to play the Necrozma before passing. So that's that's all the board that uh, that Jeff has on this turn. Yeah, this is a big nod of respect to Pedro's opening start. He believes that Pedro is going to be potentially hitting for 180 damage on this turn. So doesn't want to play down a Pokemon GX that can easily get knocked out by a huge Rayquaza. Wow. Marshadow, though. Why not let loose again? 
It worked. It worked last time. It did pretty well. Your opponent had two Pokemon and has a Psychic Energy and an Inke. I, I think I would do it again. I mean, he's got to be running, be running low on Lilies, right? <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's not the first turn anymore. It'd be, it'd be much less impactful. Yeah, uh, of course, Jeff will be able to find four new cards, as will Pedro. But Pedro's bench is now full. Uh, that's that's something that uh, that could play a factor here, as he does have triple Rayquaza, but he only has one energy on each of these Pokemon. Has no Floatstone available to his uh, to his top Lily, so I don't expect to see a knockout on this turn. I actually, see, after seeing his hand, I definitely don't expect it. Yeah, I could see him attaching Grass Energy to one of these Rayquazas and promoting it and using his GX attack. Get him a huge hand. Hopefully his opponent doesn't have an N. Yeah, I mean, once you've uh, once you've gotten, uh, yeah, once you've let loose your opponent down to a four-card hand, it seems unlikely for your opponent to have an N. But he had a Lily last turn. Why wouldn't he have an N this one? Woo! That is nice. All right, there we go. Ten cards off of Tempest GX. Oh, you rarely get to see that happen, but when you do, it's beautiful. We have had so many big wheels at, at the World Championship. It's uh, it's only fitting that we get a nice Tempest in there as well. Does Jeff have the answer? Does Jeff have an end here? If he doesn't, you have to believe that Pedro's next turn is just going to be unreal. I actually don't see an end at all, but we do have an Oranguru, which could instruct into the end. Yeah, now it's really up to Jeff to a see. A single card in hand. What cards he wants to play out holds on to the Mars Shadow as it is pretty bad to play down against Rayquaza. No, unfortunately for Jeff, he did not instruct into anything truly useful. And uh, with his hand being nothing but Pokemon and energy, he is not going to have a very exciting turn on this. Do you psychic? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or what is it? Uh, that's whatever the asleep attack is for the Inke. <laughs> Jeez, man. Um, <laughs> uh, there's uh, there's not many uh, good choices here for Jeff. Maybe he can use his Lunala Prism Star. We're not going to be seeing a Hypnosis on this turn, apparently. Is it Hypnosis? Oh, I believe boy. so, yeah. <laughs> My Mind Pals uh, told me that it was Hypnosis, so <laughs> that's what I'm going with. New Lo Lunala Star with a Full Moon Star. Uh, well, I mean... If you have a few psychic energies in your discard pile, maybe you want to do that, but I don't think he even does. Yeah. <laughs> he just I, he, he got it back from uh from recharge, so I'd say it's one of the first it, maybe even the first time I've ever <laughs> seen that attack be used if he does do it. Yeah, this card was actually a staple in all of the opening lists of Malamar. We just figured throw a lot of psychics away, get them all down, then you can get your Malamars later, who cares? But uh he has actually reintroduced this card back into the deck and <laughs> It can provide a pretty nice single prize attacker. Yeah, I mean, Psy Storm can definitely knock just about anything out later in the game or midway through the game anyway. And he's actually just going to pass here. Yeah, Pedro has not seen this card in a while. <laughs> he's going to make sure he remembers <laughs> everything it does. Okay, All 160 right. hit points. I can get those energies. Just needs one more. He has a hand of 11 cards. It has multiple puzzles in it. So Max Elixir on the sixth card. He should be able to get there. Wow. All right. So when you have a 10-card hand, 11 cards once you draw your card for the turn, you have got to be feeling pretty good about this game one. Um, like we mentioned, if he can get enough attacks off before his opponent can start return KOing, then that's when you start to feel good about uh, about Pedro and his Rayquaza deck. If he can't, though, if, if Jeff is going to be able to start return KOing from the very get-go, then that's when you start to feel good about Jeff's uh, matchup. Yep. So that's what it's going to come down to. Will Jeff be able to keep the energy off the field for very long? Honestly, with his hand, I'd say no. <laughs> yeah, Pedro's in an interesting spot. He needs to decide, if, am I going to start taking GX knockouts and really just uh, starting to hit hard with my Dragon Break? Or do I start to work through some of these Malamar? Maybe you just take the knockout that's ahead of you by using Puzzle of Time and grabbing uh, one of those Guzmas that's in your discard pile. Uh, he just has to map out his resources and make sure that whatever route he takes, he leaves himself some options in the future. I would like to see a Malamar knockout right now, personally. I think that if you can knock out the Malamar, your opponent's already had a two-card hand. I mean, you could even go for the Uranguru, really. But uh, if you can knock out the Malamar, um, you're really going to slow your opponent down, and you're going to almost guarantee yourself another turn with, uh, with that Rayquaza, if not another couple of turns. 
Yeah, I think if I had to choose a Pokemon to knock out here, it'd either be the Dawnwings Necrozma GX or to go after that Oranguru. You, your opponent is at two cards in hand. They did not do anything last turn, so you know their hand is weak. Don't give them any more chances with the Oranguru. Or you can just take out the Dawnwings and start to uh, threaten any GX knockouts uh, in the future. If he ever plays any more GX cards, you just take them off the board immediately. Well, he's going to play a Guzman. He's going to choose the, uh, the Karazma there. Definitely not a bad choice at all, as that will get him a couple of prizes, but it will also take the threat away from the, uh, from the, from the board, as now that Rayquaza is just very, very unlikely to get knocked out. Yeah, I think if you're Pedro, you're feeling pretty good here. Jeff has not had an ideal start. He's looking at two terrible cards. And he's got to figure out what to even promote. Okay, so now Jeff is likely... Well, Jeff is promoting the Inke. Oh. He finds a Mimic you. Mimic you. Um, well... He can draw two cards. Yeah, he's going to be playing a Bar Shadowed so that he can draw two cards. And those two cards are still not uh, supporters. Really nothing. Uh, he gets a Malamar, but his only Inke is... Uh, is in the active position. He can draw two more cards with ink, with uh, Mimikyu. <laughs> <laughs> That's an option Let's for him. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't know if he, there's any other plays out there that are even worth it. He's he's not working with much here. Yeah, I don't even know if he has another choice. I think that you go for it. Uh, you need to try to withdraw yourself out of this. Uh, having a Marsh Shadow GX in play, just not ideal. Yeah, this Marshadow, it takes the energy. It's also probably the most likely targeted Pokemon by Pedro, just based on the line of play that he decided to take last turn. So you know that he's eyeing this down. If he has a Guzma in that huge hand of his, you're in a lot of trouble if you're Jeff, but that's just a risk that he's going to take. All right, so now Pedro does get to start his turn with all this energy still in play. If he can find another Guzma here, it seems like he's just going to lock this game up. But can he? That's the real question. First, he's going to go with a Max Elixir. Does find that Lightning Energy, so that's going to be more energy uh, added to this field. So now, at this point, it's almost getting to the point where even if he gets his uh, his Rayquaza knocked out, it's not even going to matter that much. We're almost at that at that point in the game, and that's just based on Let Loose alone. Marshadow, just an incredible Pokemon sometimes. Yeah. Also, looking at the way that Pedro decides to play his deck, he uses Max Elixirs, places the energies on the Rayquaza that does not have the Choice Band. It's a way that you can make sure that when these Pokemon with uh, no Choice Band get knocked out, at least you'll have at least 30 extra damage coming from that Rayquaza to maybe finish the game off with him. All right. So now there's 10 total of energies. I think even uh, even we can do that math, Kyle. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a lot, right? It's three hundred damage. It is. I think that qualifies as a lot. I think that's nine energies right now, right? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> looking at the choice band thing, and it was an energy. <laughs> it's basically an energy. It's pretty good. Yeah. All right. So one thing we need to focus on uh, during this moment is the Marshadow actually can copy attacks from the discard pile with its Shadow Hunt ability. There's a really good GX attack in the discard pile right now. Which would be? Uh, Dawnwing's Necrozma. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's uh, really good. Uh, you get to... Forces make, your opponent into a Guzma. Yeah, you get to uh, make yourself invincible. You know your opponent doesn't have a Guzma in hand, so it'd work out really well if you find a Psychic Energy. Jeff is going to have to play some cards in his hand to try to draw up with the Oranguru, but I mean, it's, it's risky here. So, I mean, Jeff has to believe that he's got he's to have a very, very fortunate turn here in order for him to be able to pull that off. Finds a Floatstone through, uh, through Instruct. What attacks does he have available? I don't know, man. <laughs> Two energies is not much. Um, oh, no. <laughs> what can you do here with only two energy uh, on your active martial? If he would have known that he would have drawn the Floatstone... Yeah, even then, though, he doesn't have any Psychics in his discard pile. Really? Yeah. Oh, that was it, huh? So he's forced to retreat. Yeah, promotes the Mimikyu. Wow. And oh, Guzma off the top. Well, there's that Guzma. That Guzma will be able to target down that Marshadow. That is a huge draw. And there it is. Guzma onto that Marshadow. Marshadow was already starting to feel like it could start to attack on the following turn. All it needed to do was find another energy, but instead that timely Guzma will be able to knock that Marshadow out. 
Pedro's going to go down to a single prize. Jeff still has six remaining, and Jeff has absolutely nothing in play. Well, we look at this board state from Pedro, and we just have to believe that it would take more than a miracle for him to lose this game. Oh, yes, absolutely. I don't know a way that Jeff could come back from this. It would involve uh, Pedro forgetting how to use cards like Escape Rope and Guzmas and a lot of sleep flips. I think Pedro would have to literally fall asleep. <laughs> it's, I, getting, it's getting late. Sure. <laughs> It's been a long day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, especially if you're in Spain, right? <laughs> That's right. Maybe he hasn't adjusted. All right. So, uh, I mean, you have 75 minutes, so I don't know how much time is a I factor. Yeah, but I don't it, think you scoop, yeah. but he's really close. This Marshadow will be promoted. There's an escape rope in the hand. Any Pokemon on that side of the field will win this game. And yep. there's the handshake. Handshake signals. That Jeff is going to lose this first game to Pedro Eugenio Torres as Pedro is going to be going up one game to nothing and only needs one more game to advance to Championship Sunday. Let's see if he can do it again. Marshadow was a beast and uh, it did a lot of work. Jeff really just wasn't able to get going. Fortunately, this time around, Jeff will be going first. So maybe he gets to see a Bridget. Maybe he gets to get a lot of ink case onto his field and Maybe take a deep breath because uh, he did not get to breathe at all during that match. Pedro was all over him. I don't think this game was remin uh, was like really showcasing how the matchup actually goes. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, I think that, of course, sometimes you're just going to get lucky when you march out your opponent into just a, a hand that's never going to work. But you can't bank on that. Like, if, if Jeff would have had a return knockout early on from... Uh, from Pedro's first attack with uh, with that Rayquaza, all of a sudden there would have been a lot of pressure on Pedro to be able to pull off uh, a knockout of his own. And, yeah. of course, with a couple of Malamore in play, even if you do pull that off, if your opponent can then knock out that second Rayquaza, you're, you're just not going to get those final two prizes. And that, luckily for him, that didn't happen. Uh, of course, we saw how, uh, how Jeff just didn't have any type of aggression going at all. His hand just did not cooperate with him. And it was a very easy game one for Pedro here. Yep. I took a quick peek at the deck list. Jeff actually has no Bridget in there, but he has a lot of cards that he can play out and then big supporters like Professor Sycamores and Lily. Let's see right. if the prize cards are anything big. Three Triple psychics. psychics. Yeah, that could be pretty difficult for him to draw out of. A Rayquaza, uh, a Rayquaza, a Tapu Lele, and a Guzma. I mean, these are all cards that are very good, but when you have one of them, all of them, it's fine. It's not not the end of the world yeah, he's, he's definitely got multiples of those cards he should be okay we are underway for game two if pedro is able to close out here he will win the match and move on to championship sunday jeff. immediately we see a lot of cards at the discard pile yeah jeff starts the game off uh going first with a lone inke and just immediately dumps his entire hand discarding all seven or discarding all six cards with his professor sycamore so that he can draw seven new ones he was really close to being in trouble he had no other pokemon but he does have mysterious treasure he has acro bike so maybe you can find a basic pokemon here finds a max elixir and another I... acro bike so honestly i think he has to keep digging oh man but you don't want to give up the max oh it's i mean it's it's tough <laughs> that is the correct answer <laughs> i am right there with you buddy that is really tough okay so another uh, acro bike does he find what he needs now that's much better it was the top of lele gx i'll take that oh yeah that's big. So Tapu Lele and um, gets rid of, I couldn't even tell. Uh, it's a Giratina promo. Of course, Giratina promo. How could I not tell? <laughs> <laughs> the Just one the of the 30 of, Pokemon in his deck. Yeah, the bane of any uh, Greninja player's existence. Don't worry, they uh, they did not make the top eight here. All right, so now Jeff is finding that Inke with his uh, Mysterious Treasure. Very similar setup to uh, to the setup he had game one. Except for this time, he's going first. So maybe that Inke will not be in any danger. Uh, of course, he still has the Tapu Lele in his hand. He may choose to play it right now. He may choose to hold on to it for the for a future turn. Kind of uh, save himself against the potential Marsh Shadow as much as possible. Yep, he does have some Psychic Energy in the discard, so... Future Malamars will have Psychic Recharge available, so has to feel pretty good about that as well. Overall, not a terrible start for Jeff. He just really hopes that his hand doesn't get disrupted here because 
If he starts to see any other cards, his hand would be in a lot of trouble. He has double Malamar, Tapu Lele. Has to feel great about that. Please do not Marshadow me if I'm Jeff. Yeah, his hand's not exciting. Uh, it, I mean, it's it's excellent. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have said, I, I should have said, his hand is like, his board state is not exciting, but yes. his hand's exciting. Is what there I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah. His board state is just kind of, yeah, all right. It's a couple of inks with the floatstone. We've seen that before. But his hand is just going to just blow up the entire game. Woo! And now when uh, Pedro says anything you can do, I can do better, <laughs> as he also just plays a plays his entire hand out with that uh, Professor Sycamore and draws seven new ones. He found no Pokemon. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Not only did he find no Pokemon, he found no real draw items either. And he can lose. That does. He can actually just lose. <laughs> there, he's very close to being knocked out right now. Uh, if this Tapu Lele is able to find Sycamore and draw him into any of those attackers, pretty much any of them can finish the game. 120 hit points is not that much to get through. Pedro found the worst cards in his deck there. Pedro has got to be feeling bad about not playing the Marshadow down before Sycamoring. Well, not playing the Marshadow down instead of Sycamoring. I mean, you can't blame him, though. I wouldn't want to just see four cards. I'd want to go in and with my Sycamore and draw into all my goodies. You've got Acro Bikes, Mysterious Treasures, and Hindsight you've, 2020. Got, you've got four energies, too. Yeah, uh, of <laughs> course, cannot blame Pedro, but this kind of uh, unlikely situation is still the situation that he's in as he's forced to just pass the turn. And now Jeff could very well just win the game right now as he's about to draw himself seven new cards. Will he find an attacker and an energy? Well, we see a Marshadow. Marshadow could hit for weakness if there's a Pokemon in the discard pile with well, a relevant there's an attack. Ultra Ball in his hand. There's two Ultra Balls in his hand. So he can Ultra Ball for the right Pokemon. Two Psychics in the discard pile. A Ranguru as well. Does he have any energy in hand? I think he needs to drop his whole hand down, play the Mars Shadow, put the, uh, and then just draw three, hope to hit a Psychic Energy, and then he should be able to win the game uh, by copying one of those GX attacks, or any, any of those attacks in the discard pile. All he needs to do is draw an energy, or if he has a two energy attacker in his deck, he can Ultra Ball for it, and then Ultra Ball it away. Yeah, we can take a quick look at what he has to work with. Well, there's a full burst. Yeah, he does have it. Assuming he has it in his deck. <laughs> yeah, it might be in the discard pile now. I, I'm not sure. It may have been an early discard off of that Professor Sycamore. So if he uh, just pays attention, then he should have it there. <laughs> so, okay, uh, he may have the Mewtwo GX in his deck. And if he has it, he can find it with his yeah, he Ultra Ball and then Ultra Ball it away. Yeah, Ultra Ball. Yeah. Yep. So that it should be com available for him if he's able to run into it. Is it in his deck? We're looking through the deck for the first time. I don't see it yet. I see a Lunala, which attacks for four energy. An Necrozma, which attacks for three. Nothing mm -hmm. that attacks for two. So you're going to have to instruct and hope to hit an energy off your instruct. He's going to grab his Necrozma GX. Then he can Ultra Ball that away along with Cynthia. Grab one more card. I mean, if he has the Mewtwo GX in his discard pile, then he just wins. Right? Yeah, he would yeah. just he would just be missing it. Yeah. But. Um, I don't remember <laughs> seeing it in the discard pile, but who thinks of super absorption, man? <laughs> I mean, you you have full burst. <laughs> 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 it's either full burst or super. Why, why else would you play Mewtwo GX? All right. Well, <laughs> which attack sounds cooler? <laughs> I like super absorption. That sounds sweet. I don't know. Full burst? Uh, yeah. That's that's about as there's powerful more, There's as more potential for a full burst, for sure. All right. Looks through the deck one more time. Yeah, he could just grab an Inke or something. Lunala. I guess that's a nice safe play. Well, he's... I mean, I, I know we're, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. The Oranguru is there, but even if he does miss here... He's still in a really good spot. One Psychic Energy, though, that will that lock it energy. up. Okay. Either way, no need to uh, think about this any further. He does have the Psychic Energy in his hand, which means he will be able to attack with that Marshadow. Take that final, well, take the, the, the only prize. Hey, that works. <laughs> uh, and take down Pedro's attacker, and we will be going to a game <laughs> he three. He just skips over the Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't thinking about it. He's got the uh, the Dawn Wings Necrozma. That is going to lock up game two. We're moving to game three. We're going to game three, Kyle. It could not have come any faster. <laughs> it seems like game one went by fast, but game two, it just a whirlwind of a game. Yeah, and 
I, I love watching Pedro as he's working through that game. He looked at his discard pile seven times, and he just kept going over, was that the right play? <laughs> was, was that the right play? And he's, yeah, I mean, it looked good. And then he'd go back to his discard pile, fan it out again, and keep looking. He even looked at the top card of his deck there. He was like, was I going to draw out of this? And uh, he's just uh, he's just got a blank now. He's just got to breathe, relax, clear his mind, and uh, try to do game one again because game two was scary. We're playing a best of one for Championship Sunday. How's that sound? Uh, I, I approve. <laughs> we can <laughs> That, yeah. is, that is fine with me. A slight little edge to Pedro because he will be going first here, but um, it's going to be cool. It's going to be really awesome to see one single game to decide the winner of this match and see who goes to uh, tomorrow's final match, uh, of course, on Sunday. Yep. We have uh, plenty of time to go into this game three here, both games going pretty quickly. It looks like the match also just seems to resolve pretty quickly the way it plays out gx knockouts tend to end games pretty quickly within a few turns so uh, we could see some fireworks here for sure it looks like pedro not starting off too optimally jeff looking over at his hand i don't even think he has a basic so pedro certainly needs that help here all right pedro playing down his prizes and a couple of ultra balls Ugh. um I, yeah these are some pretty pretty gnarly prizes yeah, a little unfortunate. His hand, he needs a lot of help. He's He's got a, a few energies to work with. Started a Marsh Shadow, so not the way you want to start game three here. Jeff's yeah. thinking the same thing, though. He just mulliganed. Yeah, Jeff uh, just has to draw seven new ones. He did not have a single basic Pokemon in his hand, which is going to mean one more card for, uh, for Pedro in his hand. Just another small little advantage going Pedro's way to start this game. Yep. Uh, Pedro actually has nothing going for him. Just an acro bike so he's gonna have to find something or his his hand's gonna look a lot like game two did well we've seen how acro bike can lead to another acro bike which can lead to a top <laughs> lily so if that happens again we'll be all right that's for sure hey there's another acro bike all field right. blower ultra ball necrozma and a marsh shadow uh, and lily lily being gone is kind of cool in the worst possible way <laughs> <laughs> if you're jeff oh, okay so pedro has double puzzle of time this is a spot where he could risk uh, maybe his other acro bike, play it down. If you find a Pokemon like Rayquaza, you could go and grab uh, those Max Elixirs again. Find Sycamore. And, yeah, uh, and a Choice Band. I think you take the Sycamore to is hedge he your gonna, bets. He's going to have to double puzzle for acro bikes, I think. I'm okay with that. Maybe acro bike and Elixir, hope to hit a Pokemon. You know, beggars can't be choosers in this particular case. Uh, I think as long as you can keep the, the little streak going, why not? <laughs> uh, that's the first time I've seen him use double puzzle. It did not work out too well, but, yeah, he's going to uh, hopefully Very draw well here. Very optimistic play by Pedro here. Ray Quaza. All right. Well, he, he <laughs> went for a max elixir instead of the second uh, acro bike. Yeah, and... I mean, it, it's, it was a warranted risk. If he were to find a Pokemon, great. What, it, you don't know what second Acrobike was going to run you into as well. So no Rayquaza there. It's going to hope to see that off of the Sycamore. We're going to see Floatstone in a lot of cards falling soon. Well, yeah, uh, there's no real choice here. Yikes. As <laughs> Choice Band gone and, of course, four energy also hitting the discard pile. That's a lot of energies going down. Um of course, you like to see energies in your discard pile, but maybe not that many on turn one. Oh. Wow. Okay, maybe you do. Triple Ray Quaza with triple Guzma. That's that's a hand. That's. <laughs> I don't even know if it's um, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think it is. <laughs> you know what, though? It's an exciting hand. And, oh, man, we're just going to see so is many. Is he going to have to Tempest? Pile. Yeah. And lose three Guzma? Yeah, I think oh. you do. And not only that, but you're also storming winding away ten or nine cards there too. He's gonna throw away he's thrown away at least ten cards already. Oh, he's man. gonna throw away nine more with his abilities, and then he's gonna throw away the rest of his hand with Tempest GX. Just how he drew it up. Oh man, <laughs> you do not want to lose three Guzma here. Oh man, that is so rough. He's just gonna try to wait and see if he gets a top deck. Okay. I don't even know if that's the right play, the wrong play, or what. I've I never been in that situation yeah. in my life. I could never fathom that. 
I think maybe you hope that your opponent somehow ends you or, or something <laughs> along those lines. Maybe you find a Mars Shadow and you can save all those Guzmas. Even a Sycamore top deck would just be terrible. Like, he has very few outs that help him here. It's just an unheard of spot, honestly, if you think about it. Uh, but the fact that he chose not to Tempest will mean that he's going to have to rely a lot on the top of his deck to help him as he's going to be way too far behind if he's forced to Tempest uh, on the following turn. Jeff can get just as aggressive as he did in game two here. He has the Mysterious Treasure for a Malamar, Ultra Ball for another Malamar if he wants it, and then he can use Orangaroo Draw up to three again, and he could probably run into maybe uh, Psychic Energy and any of those attackers. He could uh, score a knockout here and be in a strong spot. He kind of smells uh, a l little bit of weakness over from Pedro's side. Nothing going on, so... Hard not to, right? Maybe it's time to get aggressive. Yeah, I think it'd be hard not to smell weakness out of Pedro here. Uh, he just seems so confused throughout the entirety of that of that turn. So many difficult plays that he uh, that he was forced to make. Awkward acro bikes, awkward double uh, double puzzle at time into uh, hitting two three of a kinds. It was just so <laughs> so weird. That's right. Uh, Jeff actually decides to go with the Inke now. Looks like he wants to play it a little more safe. He can go ahead and grab Malamar or on this Ultra Ball now. Jeff Kolink now looking at his deck, looking at the possible options. Of course, you have got to favor him in this spot. Oh, There's wow. Four Inke. <laughs> That's well, a choice. He's not going to be <laughs> he's not going to be running out of energy anytime soon <laughs> if he can evolve those into Malamars. Why? <laughs> Why four? <laughs> Why not? He has, All he has. right. Do whatever you want, man. It's your, it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jeff, a very beautiful board, if not intimidating. All right, uh, will he pass the turn? He does pass the turn. Do we have a draw here from a Lily? <laughs> okay. It's a draw card. Okay, I'll draw a card here. There's Why not? Three more energy. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that might be like three quarters of his energy gone now. Oh, man. He's got Lily. He's got escape rope. I think rope. he played the escape rope right now. Depends how confident he is if he wants to maybe retreat first. I mean, the thing is... And then have even, a floatstone Pokemon active. I think even if you don't have... You just need to draw out of this. You need to draw out of this. You, don't, you do not want to put yourself into a Tempest spot. I'm not saying it's... Well, he promoted the one with the grass. He's leaving the option available. All right. Three cards drawn. Draws doubled Mysterious Treasure. Hey. So that will find him a, a Tapu Lele. It can find him a Mars Shadow. It could find him a Mars Shadow. That's actually right. Double Mysterious Treasure gone. Does he have a Mars Shadow in his deck? He does. Yeah, that's going to be a great way to reset here. Oh, I think you go for it for sure. Even though your opponent has a very poor hand himself, he has a Ranguru's Instruct, which is just, it's enough of a reason for me to just go for it. I don't want a Tempest here. I really don't want a Tempest here, and I don't want to just pass without doing anything. Rely on the rest of your deck. It's it's pulled through for you for this enti the entirety of this tournament. It can do it one more time, right? Pedro agrees. Letting loose. All right. Letting a little bit loose here with the Marsh Shadow. <laughs> if he draws into a lot of bad cards, do you Tempest? I... Uh, I mean, yeah, it's better than it's better than tempesting away a uh, triple Guzma, right? If you if you draw into two Guzmas, do you tempest? These are the questions he asks himself as he draws into his cards. He found Guzma in a puzzle. Those are actually really, really bad to discard here. So, might have to rethink the strategy. I think you still do it. Yeah, he knows he's he is down two puzzles. It's unlikely that he's able to make the last two puzzles connect, anyways. Yeah, I, I just do it at this point. Losing one Guzma is okay. Be way better than losing three. You need to find aggression. Like, you've already given your opponent four new cards in hand. You cannot expect for your opponent to keep drawing poorly for the remainder of this game. You need to make something happen for yourself. I don't know if I agree with that one, though. Yeah, he's getting really low. I think he would have felt better if uh, off of that he discarded one of his puzzles. I said, all right, at least there was no hope for it. He also could have used his Puzzle of Time and checked to see if those three cards were going to be good or not if he wanted to use Tempest 
uh, to draw into those cards. Or if he wanted to discard them with Stormy Winds, he had that option available to him. If you had to guess how big of a deck he's got right now, how, how many cards would you guess? Uh, a nice 16. Nice juicy 14. Oh, yeah. we're close to each other. All right. Yeah. <laughs> this Tempest would be scary. Oh, boy. Goes for it. <laughs> I can respect this play, Kyle. Draws 10 cards and has, I think I'm right. Or it might be between our two numbers. <laughs> is it, is it, it five? It might be 15. Okay. Come on, count it out for us, Jed. One, Let me know. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, five. Wow. We're good, High man. High five, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We actually looked right at each other's eyes and high five. That was pretty nice. That's a moment right there if I've ever had one. <laughs> All right. Pedro here. Um, we'll have five cards remaining in his deck and six <laughs> prizes left. Normally not the kind of odds you like to uh, to be looking down. But, you know... Sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures, Kyle. So if you're Jeff, your opponent has five cards left. He has taken no prizes. He plays no ends. If you play no Pokemon GX, do you just win the game by passing every turn with six Pokemon? If you know your opponent's deck I'll answer deck list? that question for you, yes. If you know your opponent's deck list, yes. Of course there are super rods and... Rescue stretchers, so you want to count those first before you go for something as wild as that. But there is a very uh, reasonable chance that uh, Pedro just decks out. There's just no way that you know your opponent's deck list uh, card for card. It's impossible. Maybe that's what they were doing for 20 minutes when they left. <laughs> <laughs> I would go back and watch the VODs and see what Pedro's deck was. Sure, but I mean, even I mean, we're, we're talking about for a lot of money, man. We're talking about literally knowing every card in your opponent's sixty card deck. I can't believe. Oh that. yeah. All right, goes for the ink with the floatstone. He's got a lot of his Thought, singleton well, attackers in hand. And is there a reason why he didn't go for the ringer? Wow. Yeah, he just passed the turn, and uh, did he just get knocked out immediately? That was the fastest two turns ever. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're we're definitely on. Uh, Pedro get, taking some some prizes here, but I, I could have sworn I saw a Guzma, and I don't know why he went after the Inke with the Floatstone and not the Oranguru. Uh, either way, uh, there is a Sycamore in hand here for Jeff. So Jeff has uh, definitely some options here available to him. Yeah, he actually just doesn't want to use those. I think he's going to filch here. Wow. Draw two cards. Wow. Yeah. He is counting. <laughs> is he going for the strategy? He I really out? is. <laughs> it's, oh, do, how many cards are left in pa There's like three, three cards left in yeah. Pedro's deck. Does he have any left, though, that can bring cards back in? If he does, then just he's, he's got three Inkes. That's three sleep flips, potentially. Okay, that's <laughs> true. But then that's... You still have to believe that... You force Guzmas. Pedro's got at least a Guzma left, right? We are going to see the Ultra Ball coming down. He discards that Sycamore. He has to value these cards in his hand so much if he's going to let two Pokemon get knocked out before he plays that Professor Sycamore. And Oh, man. But it, oh, do you really start to play GXs and EXs now? No, right? You just it, can't. Like, you've already gone through two turns of, of just... Passing, uh, passing to your opponent, you can't start yeah, to if give you, him a shot. If at... you do, you play Dawn Wings, Necrozma, and you use your GX attack. You don't uh, even have any Malamars in play, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> what world am I in in which he can in which he can Dawn Wings Necrozma right now? Uh, a right, world where the Sarangaru helps him a lot. <laughs> well, it helped him a little. He does okay. have the psychic energies in his discard pile. One Malamar in discard Acrobite pile. Finds a floatstone and a psychic energy. Of course, floatstone is going to be the card that hits his hand, right? Yeah, it is. Now, easy Cynthia at least. But I, I'm just I'm shocked. I I feel like Jeff is just going for the strategy of. Please don't have a super odd. Please don't have yeah. a rescue stretcher. <laughs> Honestly, he, he may think that he just has the resource count there and he's going to be okay. Maybe he's got the uh, <laughs> the handiwork. <laughs> <laughs> I can't uh, answer that question. It's no, but wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Jeff, 
Jeff, what are you doing? What do, I, I, I just want insight on. I'm not even questioning the plays. I just want to know what he's doing. Right. I want to be inside yeah. his head because he has to work out of a crazy scenario. Rayquaza has how many energies now? Seven on board. He's got three cards in deck, and he is just trying to find a way out right now, attacking his way through every Pokemon on Jeff's side of the board. All right, we get a good look at his deck, at least. The only Pokemon that we saw in the deck up until he found it was the Malamar. So there's plenty of items, plenty of energy left in the deck. Maybe very little Pokemon, if any, remaining in there. So we have a couple of Malamars. Now the Donwings and Necrozma can definitely be a, uh, an option. You know, now it wouldn't be cheating if he all of a sudden... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the scenario played out. All right. Um, He's got an idea with this Lunala, man. Yeah, Lunala Prism Star. It, it can get some knockouts, and it will only provide one prize to your opponent. Has he already used any... Uh, well, let's count. Any uh, psychic recharges? There are seven energy on the Rayquaza side. There are four energy on his side. That is 220 damage. That is a good attack. Okay. <laughs> we agree. Uh, now, Lunala Prism Star did not have any psychic recharges uh, played onto it, so now it does, and that will provide it with four energy. Remember, it's a one prize attacker that is also knocking down some of your opponent's energy. That's exactly what you want to see if you're Jeff. Yeah, and does Pedro have any way to accelerate energy onto his board? He currently does not have enough energy to knock out a Lunala. It has 160 hit points. You're one need... energy attachment for the turn leaves him 10 short. You're going to need two energy Two additional energy in play right now if you're Pedro. I don't. You have two cards left in your he deck. Has any energy acceleration? He that doesn't play Latios. Very well, may be checkmate. Jeff finds the play that just seals the game up for him potentially. I'm not saying he has, but man, I am saying it's likely. Ow. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that hurt. <laughs> Go away. And how does it have 160 hit points? It's not a GX. <laughs> it's How's good. that even possible? <laughs> I'll tell you how it's possible. Oh, he's just going to check these oh, two cards. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Hmm. All right. Which one goes on top? Which one goes on bottom? When you when you hand your deck to your opponent, no, the shuffle is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just flips them around. Whatever. All right. Let's see the rest of his hand. He has that rescue stretcher in hand, so at least he's not going to deck right now, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe you just hope your opponent doesn't have a Guzma. Uh. I mean, right now, Lunala is hitting for 160, so he has to get another energy onto the board, but you have to think that Jeff could certainly do that. I Yeah, think... but, like, so here's the thing is, you need to get another energy onto your board in order for you to uh, right. potentially threaten to uh, <laughs> you're, knock out your... You're, you're going to yeah. feed the Lunala if you ever attach. Yeah. Uh, so you need to hope your opponent doesn't have a Guzma. Like, yeah. I think you need to hey, keep the Malamar active. Um and attach an energy onto one of your bench requazes. I and think the only way that uh, Pedro actually gets out of this is if a Marsh Shadow gets knocked out here, then he rescue stretchers it back in. Maybe he can use the ability of Let Loose and get rid of this hand that Jeff has. I don't, I'm not, honestly not sure what else he's got available for Do we for see him. a Guzma in hand? I do not see a Guzma yet, Kyle. I Guzma would have been just, I think, checkmate. Yeah, Absolutely. But but he does not have it in hand, at least not to my knowledge. He, he, does. Should, he should absolutely get risky here. He's got a field blower. He's got Ultra Ball. He can play out his whole hand and then use his Orangaroo. If the Ultra Ball doesn't already just hit a Tapu Lele and basically seal the game for him right now. Man, I am so positive that I, could, that I saw that there was an opportunity for him to knock out that Orangaroo early on in the game. Either way, though, it could backfire. It could haunt him right now. Oh, wow. Orangaroo... <laughs> Maybe getting jiggy with it. Yeah, he's going to actually just use his Psychic Recharge before he does anything else in the turn. Does that mean his turn's over? Yeah, he's um, just going to pass. pass. So now you definitely have a knockout of your Pedro. So he's just trying not to let his opponent lose the, the Mar Shadow. I get that. But you're losing a your one-hit KO attacker in Lunala. Are you so positive that you're going to be able to uh, one hit KO this Rayquaza here. Does he have the tools in his hand to get a, a KO against this Rayquaza? I think that's what Jeff was saying when he chose that play. 
He has an Ultra Ball in hand. He has no energy, but he has a Max Elixir in hand. He has Dawnwing's Necrozma GX in hand. He is currently losing the game. So that means that he would be able to get to use his GX attack as it hits the discard pile. He has a Dawnwing's Necrozma so, in the discard pile. Marshadow. He has a Marshadow now on the bench, though. That gives him the most options. Sure. Um, now, uh, it yeah, does he have still has much to find an less energy. hit points. He has a Max Elixir, though. That Max Elixir has to hit right away. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> looks like it hits. <laughs> so you will be seeing, you will be seeing uh, a Shadow Hunt here from from Marshadow to copy the Dawnwings Necrozma's GX attack. Um, yeah. One card left in Pater's deck, by the way. Yeah, and that Marshadow is invincible. 150 hit points, but it's still invincible. Now, we're going to see an Instruct first because, you know, you want to play optimally. Right. He does have that Moon's Eclipse GX option available for him. And it's 180 damage perfectly. Also attaches an extra energy in preparation for copying his Mewtwo, most likely, on the following turn. It could even be the Necrozma. It, it, he, oh, yeah. He's got the, the, regu the regular Necrozma GX. Yeah. He'll just set up for a, a huge knockout there. So he should have all his options available to him. Wow. Okay. So... Pedro is going to lose his Rayquaza and three energy attached to it. He's going to be left with only three energy in the entire board. If he plays his energy that he's going to draw off the top, that's still only going to leave him with four energy. That's going to be 120 damage. Um, he's going to need to Guzma on the same turn and uh, knock out, I mean, pretty much anything. But even then, then he, he just gets that uh, Rayquaza knocked out right back, right? Yep. I don't see it. I don't see it either, Kyle. I think... Uh, I think Jeff just played this very, very well and put himself in a position where his best his best play was past my new Lunala. The yeah. biggest thing I have, if you knock it out, I'm just going to win. And it worked. <laughs> that's uh, that's like the Queen's Gambit, basically, in chess terms, where you give up you give up your most powerful piece yeah. in order to secure a checkmate. <laughs> you can have her. Who cares? <laughs> All right. Um Un just unbelievable gameplay here by, by Jeff, showing that he deserves to be in the top four. Now, of course, judges are uh, convening. We don't know exactly what's happening there, but at the same time, you have got to believe that Pedro is just a couple of turns away from losing this game. I think they were checking the, how the energies got onto the Marshadow. It was attached elixir. Yeah, it was double a, charge, it was elixir double right? charge. Yeah. yeah, and then one energy from hand. Yep. But just wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. Um, of course, you still want to double check everything. If, if there's any type of question, you want to make sure that there is no uh, issues or errors. Sometimes, sometimes players make an issue, uh, make, an, make a mistake, and uh, in this particular case, there was none yep. made. And time's not really uh, a big worry here. We've got 24 minutes left, of course, plus three turns. Don't think we're going to have to see that, though. Uh, it looks like Jeff is coming very close to finishing this game here. I personally cannot find a way out of this for, for Pedro. Um, I, I've looked through his hand a few times here. I, I've seen I've seen the contents of his hand, and I know how he can extend the game, but it's just not going to give you... It's just not going to give you what you need, that uh, that Shadow Hunt. <laughs> I, can dis I can respect that. Well played. The judge supporter. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. Just very, very intense situation here uh and it looks like what there it is we do see that knockout onto the Rayquaza and now just the Marsh Shadow becomes the active Pokemon we see the rescue stretcher finding a couple of Rayquazas I think he's going to try to go out on his own terms Kyle <laughs> he could stormy wins and <laughs> just get himself out of here if he wanted to that's definitely one way to go you don't beat me I beat I me. beat me it's the only way I'm gonna lose this tournament nobody makes me bleed my own blood <laughs> Except me. <laughs> All right. He does so, have Ultra Ball in hand. The stars are aligning. Three Pokemon in the deck. No energies remaining in there. Let's just find a way to win. <laughs> I, I would be very surprised. <laughs> you would have to pick my job off the floor. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, four energy in play for him. He's just forced to pass the turn. Of course, Marshadow with four energy on it. 
I can finally say it, Kyle. The world is his oyster, my friend. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Jeff, so many options available to him. If he has the Guzma. I don't see a Guzma in hand, but... He has the Tapu Lele. Yeah, but there is a Tapu Lele, so if there's a Guzma in the deck, there it is, that he Guzma goes to it. the hand. So that Guzma will allow him to take his final prizes here. Just going to go ahead and find the Pokemon he's going to choose the attack of. It is going to be that Necrozma GX. There it is. Handshake. Pedro extends the hand. Jeff Kolink becomes our first finalist in this Masters division of the Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships in 2018. Unbelievable. Malamar. 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 Lunala Malamar. Prism wow. Star. <laughs> Unreal. Uh, you know... When we saw the bracket, uh, we saw that he did dodge all the Zoroarks on, on his side of the bracket. Right. And we thought that there was that if there was ever going to be a road paved for Malamar, <laughs> Malamar, uh, uh, if there was ever going to be a road paved for this Malamar deck to make.